Hello there. We have brewed a lot of coffee in a lot of different places. Today we're doing a new one. Uh, today we're brewing coffee in the microwave. That's the video. <laughs> no, but it's with a little bit more intention because the brewer we have to look at today, I'm very tickled by and it brews in the microwave. So without further ado, let me just go grab it. This right here is the Black & Decker Espresso Mio. No, I did not mispronounce that. That is in fact what it, what it does say on the box right here. It says Espresso Mio TM. And this happens to be a little microwave safe brewer. Now, this is a pretty old brewer this is one that was kind of tricky to come upon. I had to scour eBay for it. This, as far as I can tell, seems to have come out around 1998 and you don't really see them that much anymore. Now, some things of note on the packaging of this brewer. It says, designed for two minutes in a microwave. Rich espresso, espresso, it says two S's there. Fast and easy, cappuccino, latte, mocha, and more. It seems to be a three-step process. You add water and espresso, you microwave. And this is my favorite part. It says you create and indulge, which is my favorite description of consuming coffee in existence. And if I may, let me just read you the paragraph that is sitting here on the back because the copy on this packaging is, is quite lovely. Indulge yourself in the robust flavor of cafe style espresso, cappuccino, latte, or other European style coffee anywhere there is a microwave, at home, in a dorm, or at the office. So very lovely, very exciting. Uh, Let's kind of break down the components we have here. First things first, this right here is not a brewer. This is an additional milk frother that comes with it. If you'll note, it looks very similar to a French press and in function, it works very similarly to how you would froth milk in a French press. Essentially, you heat up your milk, you pour it in here, top it off, and then using the plunger, which has this very, very fine filter on it, you plunge and incorporate air that way. That is how we will partake in cappuccinos and lattes. There is this, um, <laughs> I'm a little bit at a loss as to what this is. Now, I was promised due to the packaging, I seem to have been promised a scoop of some sort. Now, in this packaging, when I received it and this was an unopened box, there was no scoop of any sort, red or otherwise. However, there was this thing, which seems vaguely funnel-like, but also not really. So, not sure what this is. Maybe we'll run into how it comes into play later. And then, of course, we have the Espresso Mio itself. It breaks into a couple pieces. You have your lid here. This is a just a lid, very easy. You have your primary brewing chamber. This is where all of your coffee is going to eventually come into. And then once you are ready, you kind of grab the handle and pour out. And then you have the bottom section. Just unscrew the main body. And now you have this. Let's break it down from top to bottom. First of all, we have a fine little filter right here. We have a little coffee chamber right here. Put your espresso right in there. And then we have a bottom chamber for water. At this point, you might uh, recognize <laughs> what this thing seems to be built like. I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with Pokemot. This is essentially a little microwave safe mocha pot. Once I realized this, I was still very, very tickled by this brewer. I really like mocha pots. I think they're lovely. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me show you one. Please don't mind that this one has cow print on it. I got it from Couplet and I love it dearly. However, mocha pots are generally stovetop brewers. And very, very similarly to what we have in here, if you unscrew the main body of a mocha pot, you will find yourself once more with a chamber for your coffee and a chamber for water. I'm quite excited to see how this all fares in the microwave. Friend, no. <laughs> I need to go get some coffee ready and ground so we can do this pretty efficiently. So I will be right back. I wanna give a huge thank you to Trade Coffee for sponsoring today's video. We all deserve something nice every morning and for a lot of us, that's our cup of coffee. Trade helps you start your day with the best cup every time. With a simple quiz, Trade will find coffees that fit your exact needs and ship them to you straight from roasters all over the US. Every coffee is tested by a team of experts to create a carefully curated selection. I've been partnering with Trade for a long time now because I really think they have a wide and phenomenal range of coffees. I've also recently worked closely with their team to put together a collection of some of my favorite coffees and roasters. We really focused on finding some of the tastiest single origin offerings out there, including the Sumatran coffee that I'm brewing right now. But if my collection isn't up your alley, don't worry, because Trade will have whatever you want. You can always shop their most popular selections by roast or flavor profile, or you can let the quiz do the work for you. Trade also guarantees that you'll love your first bag, but if not, they'll work with you to replace it for free. So if you're ready to get started, Trade is offering my viewers a total of $30 off your first order plus free shipping. When you go to drinktrade.com, com slash mdc or click the link in the description again that's drinktrade.com slash mdc for thirty dollars off plus free shipping all right we have some ground coffee all ready to go here we also have some cold water i know it's in a kettle i'm just using that for control over the water flow but this is cold water as the instructions indicate like we would with a mocha pot we're going to fill this bottom chamber up with water just to under kind of the lip and we're going to just kind of plop our coffee chamber in and then because i have been just fully robbed of a scoop i'm going to use my own spoon to 
scoop the coffee in. Although at this point I have accumulated quite a few coffee scoops, but here we go anyways. Now, like with a mocha pot, you don't need to pack down your coffee once it's in there. Just kind of spill it on the side, get yourself a nice, nice kind of like heaping amount of coffee in there. If you are me, just brush off any excess that falls around the rim, then your filter can go back on. And then, very carefully, you screw the main body on. We're gonna pop this in the microwave to start off for about one and a half minutes just to see what we get. Because there is quite a variance in microwave power and microwave just performance in general, you could go for a variety of times. One and a half minutes to two minutes seems to be the, the happy zone from what I've read. So start at one and a half. We don't want to overflow. We don't want bad things to happen. So let's get to the microwave. Welcome to my microwave. I cleaned it just for you. <laughs> now we're just gonna very carefully center our espresso mio right inside. Lid is on firmly, everything's sealed. Give it one minute, 30 seconds. This is fun. We're just over one minute in. There doesn't seem to be any signs of overflowing or spillage, so good so far. Okay, sounds are happening from in there. Although no overflowing still, so I think we're, we're in good territory. Okay, moment of truth. If you can hear, it's making sounds not dissimilar to a mocha pot. Okay, we definitely have liquid in there. It seems to still be bubbling, so let's go back to the countertop and take a peek at what we have. This is the uh, the sort of bubbling action we have going on here. Now there is certainly liquid down in the base here. I'm excited to see what it tastes like. And it looks like it's just finishing now. Due to how dark the inside of this is, it's very hard to actually tell how much liquid is in here or what color it is or anything like that. So we have a glass, let's hopefully have some espresso. A quick side note here before we pour out our final beverage. The definition of espresso has certainly evolved a lot over the years. Generally nowadays when we say espresso, we usually mean very finely ground coffee that has had water pushed through it at like nine to 10 bars of pressure. This results in a small beverage, usually about two ounces if you're pulling a double shot, that is very, very concentrated. It has like a high acidity. Sometimes people will call it bitter and that's, that's what we think of as espresso. However, sometimes people think of what mocha pots make as espresso or a variety of other brewers. It's both a word that has a lot of definition and also a lot of fluidity as well. Is that a word? Fluidity? Fluid? Fluidness? Can you confirm? The ability of a substance Awesome, fluidity. <laughs> that is to say, especially due to the age of this brewer, I'm not necessarily expecting the liquid we've created to fit into any really modern definitions of espresso, but I am hoping for something tasty. Grab the handle, I love this handle. Okay, moving on. This is definitely less liquid than I was hoping for. Now, I know I did spill a bit of it across the floor, and there's a little bit left in there. We just need to have a sip at this point. It's very hot. It's very hot indeed. It tastes like coffee from a mocha pot. However, it tastes like not very good coffee from a mocha pot. So let's have a little look-see at what we have down here. I'm very curious how much water is actually left over in this base. Carefully now. Note to self, do not touch brewer while hot. We have a good, what looks like ounce, maybe ounce and a half of water still left down here. And that is an ounce and a half of water that I wish was in my final coffee. So we're gonna do this another time. We are going to hopefully get a little bit more espresso than we did before. And we're also going to try to make, at the end of this, a cappuccino. Let's clean everything, let's continue. Cold water into the lip. I'm looking at this and I, it's not a funnel, but it's not, not funnel-like, so perhaps if we use it in this way, we'll see a slight improvement on the amount of coffee I drop around the edges. I still feel a little bit cheated out of my scoop here. Filter back on, top back on, back to the microwave. I'm gonna tack on about 15 seconds to this, so we're gonna hit a nice even one minute and 45 seconds on the brew time. Goodbye, friend. I hope you fare better than you did previously. As I said, I would love to make a cappuccino with our little frother here. So I'm gonna get some milk. And then once that is done, while the brewing finishes up, we're gonna heat up some milk in the microwave. Our little buddy is brewing in there. So in goes the milk. By our little buddy, I definitely mean the coffee. You can kind of hear the bubbling of the coffee traveling up and into the final chamber. I'm gonna just leave the lid on as to maintain as much heat as possible until that bubbling sound is done. If you've used a mocha pot, you'll know sometimes in some scenarios when the coffee is traveling up into the final chamber, the expelling of it can be like a little bit violent. That doesn't seem to be the case here, so we're just gonna let it sit, do its thing, 
milk's almost done. Actually, that sounds pretty close to done, so. All right, well, we definitely have more liquid than before, which is great. The additional time seemed to really help the brewing process. I'm just gonna take the lid off. You know, I, I'm not positive I was actually supposed to leave that on to begin with. Hmm. We do have a bit of drippage from the bottom, I will say. First things first, a sip. It's very hot, very, very hot. It kind of tastes like a mocha pot coffee. And that is the most description I think I can give of that. Now, I would love to turn this into a cappuccino, so just put that there. Very carefully, our milk needs to go into this. So I'm gonna do this over the sink. Milk has been transferred, and now we froth. I love doing this. I don't know if I've mentioned this enough, but with French presses, frothing milk is so much fun. Now, since I have not been provided a pitcher, I think we'll just pour directly from the test tube. It is most certainly not the prettiest cappuccino <laughs> I have ever made, but I am very pleased with it. Now, some sippage. Well, it certainly tastes like the sum of its parts, which isn't to say bad, it just, uh, it's not extraordinary, but it is, quite fun. I think that really sums up my <laughs> my final thoughts about our, our strange little trial today. It's not extraordinary by any means, but it is quite fun. I feel like the real draw to this, um, as kind of janky and a little bit silly as it is, might not be even dorms or like offices, but like hotels. Like if you are if you are traveling somewhere and let's say you don't have access to a stovetop, but I feel like most hotel rooms nowadays will usually have a microwave, this could come in kind of handy. It's not gonna be awesome coffee. It's not gonna like blow you out of the water, but this thing is a mocha pot that is designed for the microwave. And if you like mocha pot coffee, this could be kind of useful. You will have to take into consideration that the lid needs to come off when pouring. Sometimes you will have a little bit of drippage from the bottom there. There are numerous things. Maybe you won't get a scoop, you know? Sometimes scoops are just taken away from you. But all in all, it's fun. It tickles me. I'm glad we had a look at it today. So this was the Espresso Mio. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed yourselves today. I know I certainly did. And in the meantime, I hope you have a great rest of your week. I had to say that very slowly because this is actually, little do you know, the second take of me saying that because previously I said west of your week. So <laughs> anyways, I think I should leave now. My name is Morgan Drinks Coffee and you can find me pretty much everywhere I'm active online. I'm here on YouTube. You can find me pretty much everywhere I'm active online. What does that mean? <laughs> My username is Morgan Drinks Coffee. It is that username pretty much everywhere I'm active online. I am here on YouTube once a week plus shorts. Additionally, you can find me on TikTok and Instagram almost every single day. I think I need to get off camera. Um, I'm gonna take this with me. I'm gonna drink some more of it and I'll see you next time. Have a great day, everyone.